welcome to this review of my Topra Type Heaven keyboard. This keyboard was a donation from Australia. Thanks again, Natalie. The Type Heaven is an economy offering from Topra, cheaper than their more upmarket Real Force range. Sorry, I'll stop now. It's an economy alternative to the Real Force, which I've reviewed before. Now, the ones among you who are familiar with Topra are probably already snickering at the idea of an economy Topra board. And indeed, even this cheaper option is still around $150, which will otherwise get you pretty far in keyboard land. So let's be honest, this had better be good. Still, with a real force sitting around the $230 mark, it's about $80 cheaper, which is a big enough gap to fit several other keyboards in. So what did they do to make it so much cheaper? Well, there are a couple of differences for sure. First of all, the real force is generally, not always, but it is what it's named after after all, fitted with variable weight Topra switches, while the Type Heaven comes with fixed weight switches, 45 grams to be specific. The idea behind the variable weighting is that it's more in tune with the strength of your individual fingers, hence why the switches that are supposed to be used with your pinky are lighter, for example. Whether you actually like this variable weighting, or would rather just have a uniform setup, depends completely on taste. Personally, I prefer the 45 gram uniform, as it avoids the really light Topra switches which have near zero tactility. It's also questionable that this contributes to the price difference. They should be equally expensive to make, and the real force models that do come with uniform weighting aren't cheaper than the variable weight ones. In fact, I've seen the opposite. Now, Topra have a somewhat unique feel among mechanical keyboards. The tactility is very rounded, in the same way other rubber domes feel. And what I mean by rounded is the opposite of sharp. Let me show you what I mean with some force graphs. Here's a Topra switch compared to a very sharply tactile switch, Matthias Click. With the Matthias, after the tactile peak, the force drops down very sharply, which gives a very strong and sudden feedback. However, with the Topra switch, the force goes down again very gradually, which results in a more glidey feel rather than falling off a cliff. It's this rounded feel that Topra users like so much. One side effect of a rounded key feel is that the higher force is maintained for much longer than if it were a very sharply tactile switch, and as a result, the classification 45 grams sounds misleadingly light, while it's actually considerably stiffer than non-rounded 45 gram switches with a sharper drop. This is because the stiffness of the switch isn't actually determined by force, but by work. Similarly, preload can make a big impact in the perceived weighting of the switch. It's not ultra stiff or anything, it's kind of in the medium stiff ballpark. Just don't expect a super light switch out of it. So anyway, it's not the switches that cause the price difference. Could it be the build quality then? After all, the Type Heaven is made in China, but the real force is made in Japan. Well, the labor costs in those two countries may well be different, so that could explain it, but the quality of the build on the Type Heaven is really not disappointing, I can tell you that. The weight of the Type Heaven is 1270 grams, which I found surprisingly light, because it feels really taut and dense to be honest, and as if to prove my point, it barely flexes. No, seriously, this is one of the most solid feeling modern keyboards I've felt, and I mean solid very literally, as in it feels like there's no empty space on the inside. The real force weighs 1380 grams, 110 more than the Type Heaven. It's also well made, but they both sport a thick metal mounting plate, and honestly one doesn't feel better than the other. If anything, the Type Heaven feels slightly more solid than the real force does. They do sound a bit different though. The Type Heaven is slightly louder and sounds noticeably more high pitched than the real force. Let me show you real quick. I'd say that sound-wise, the real force is definitely the clear winner here. So if you're really into that Topra Thok sound, the real force will take a couple of points here. It also looks worse than the real force in my opinion. They both have a nice, simple, unassuming, austere look, which I like, but the Type Heaven has this weird folded back looking back edge, which I think is pretty ugly. The real force looks more classic, and I realize that this is of course a white one, and comparing across colors might not be ideal, but if anything, I find the black real force to be even better looking. The back of the keyboard shows very similar stuff to the real force. Simple flip out feet, a straight USB cable and a two-way cable gutter. There's not a huge amount of difference here, except that the Type Heaven uses screws, while the real force uses plastic clips to keep the case together. So I'd say the Type Heaven actually wins out here. 
On the other hand, the keycaps are quite different. The real force, like the HHKB, uses die sublimed PBT keycaps, while the Type Heaven uses lasered ABS instead. I presume they're also infilled with white material afterwards, otherwise you can't really read them. And this is one of the board's weaknesses, because infilling has a tendency to gather finger grime on the legends very quickly. I'm talking hours here. And you can see exactly that on several of the keycaps already, especially this M key. This were probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks for many out there because I've noticed that the keyboard community sometimes ascribes near mythical properties to PBT keycaps for some reason. I get the feeling that they put more dosh down for PBT keycaps than they would if they were made out of mithril mined by the dwarves of Middle Earth. Lasered ABS keycaps are also an advantage here though, because these keycaps do at least have white on black legends, while the black real force models use black keycaps that are still die sublimed. But as you can only use a die that's darker than the host material, you end up with black on black letters, or rather black on dark grey, which is barely legible. So if you want white on black keycaps, this is actually a pro. As I said, I'm pretty sure that this difference in keycaps is a massive thing worth at least $80 to some people, even though the difference in production costs is probably less than 80 cents. But personally, I really don't give a shit. I'd probably be happy with these infilled caps as a matter of fact. Or the best of both worlds, the black and white PBT die subs, or white on black inverse die subs, although I don't think those are available for Topra. Overall, it's a solid board, and if you like Topra switches, or even if you just want to try Topra out, I definitely say this merits serious consideration. Is it a better deal than a real force? That really depends on where your priorities lie. I mean, if you must have PBT keycaps for some reason, yeah, it's not going to be much competition. And sure, it doesn't sound as good, but the build and key feel to me is just as solid. Of course, at $150, it's still overpriced for what, let's be honest, is still, no matter how you look at it, a rubber dome keyboard. But perhaps its biggest downfall is that it's not overpriced enough, which seems to be a part of the appeal of Topra keyboards, a bit like Apple stuff is to Apple users. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.